Welcome back. Uh, on today's backyard remediation, we're going to be working on the misting system. I installed some misters uh, probably close to four years ago that go around my patio area. When you're cooling an area, the most effective way to keep it cool is to go all the way around the area so that you can create a curtain of mist because as that uh, water vapor evaporates, it cools off the area and by surrounding the area completely, you effectively cool this area by a good amount. Now, originally when I put this in, I was just running off of city water pressure, um, but I wasn't happy with how the mist came out. So at the time, what I ended up doing was I bought this uh, small booster pump. I think it's 150 PSI. And I built this box. Uh, I built it out of OSB, which I don't know why I did that. Don't, don't build boxes that are uh, visible to everyone out of OSB because it's really ugly. Um, so this is the box I built for this small pump. And I still wasn't very happy with it, but I didn't really have the budget to buy a full uh, 1,000 PSI pump. Uh, so I figured it was time to fix that. And so I've now got this pump. I built a new box, which is hanging up there with a couple of 3 8 inch uh, lag screws. For typical installations, people will uh, put the pump somewhere else, uh, like, you know, maybe on a side yard and then you run the plumbing over. That was going to be a lot more expensive and difficult for me to do because I didn't I would have had to have run that quarter inch uh, stainless line all the way over here. I already had uh, a water line right here that you can see running up the wall. So I just ran some half inch PVC over and then I've got a little hose bib right there so that I can turn the water off if I need to do maintenance on the pumps. Test their system. Let's turn it on for a couple minutes. Okay. finished. Kind of a cool feeling if you haven't uh, been around a mystery system before because it's quite hot out here and as soon as you turn them on I mean almost instantly you can feel uh, the air has cooled off significantly, like I'm actually much cooler than I was 10 seconds ago. Now a lot of people they think uh, with a mister system uh, it's cooling you off because when you go say over here and you stand actually in the mist, well the mist feels cool because it hits your skin and then it evaporates which cools your skin off. Uh, but the purpose of making a mist curtain around an area like this and so almost kind of enclosing it in this mist is you're actually uh, creating like a little pocket in here of cooler air because as that mist evaporates it captures heat and so the air is cooled down. The two things that we need to talk about uh, for making a good mister system are the amount of water that you're flowing and also the pressure at which that water is coming out of your nozzles. So the amount of water that comes out is important for a couple reasons. First of all if you have too much water you'll start deposit you'll start depositing water on walls and on the ground, which you don't really want because it can puddle, uh, you, people could slip on it. And also it's nice just not having water all over the place. But it's also important to make sure that you have enough water because without an adequate amount of water coming out, uh, it's not going to, you won't have enough of it evaporating to cool off the space adequately. Now there's no one right amount of water. It's really going to depend on a few things, uh, things that are generally out of your control. One of those big things being uh, the humidity of the environment. So here in Arizona where it's um, really dry most of the year, that's like you know 10, 20, up to 30 percent relative humidity, we can get away with putting a lot more water out through these nozzles. 
So generally for dry climates, they recommend like a 12 thou nozzle. Um, I ended up going with a 10 because the 12, I think was just a little bit too much. And it was because my roof line isn't that tall. And because it's only about eight or eight and a half feet to the ground here, I was getting some water deposits on these lower ones uh, on, the, on the ground. So I went with the 10s and the 10s are doing great. It's not leaving water anywhere. And it's also, you know, as you can see, putting out a good amount of water and doing a good job at cooling off the space. So the main way to control the amount of water you have coming out is the nozzle size, but it's also uh, how many heads that you have. You can space these out different lengths. I think common is like two and four feet. So if you have, you know, a really big space and you want a lot more water, go with two foot spacing. If you want less coming out, you can go with four foot spacing. And then the other big thing uh, that's much harder to, or I should say much more expensive to achieve, is the water pressure. So for years, I was just operating off of city water pressure and the quality of mist that you get, that is the droplet size, because the droplet size is directly influenced by the amount of pressure that you have pushing the water out through the nozzle. You want higher pressure because you want a finer mist. A finer mist is going to evaporate much more readily, which means you can output more water and it's going to cool out, cool off the area more effectively. So let's come up here and take a look at the pump. So this is a pretty standard pump. You can buy these all sorts of places. We have a local store for misting equipment. This is a thousand PSI pump. It'll actually go a little bit higher than that, but I adjusted it to be at a thousand. Uh, there's two nice big filters on here. Uh, one of them is mainly for particulates. The other one is for uh, hard water deposits. So it's filtering out minerals like calcium, which keeps the nozzles nice and clean. Otherwise, without that, you get deposits building up on them and you have to clean them more often, which is kind of obnoxious. Uh, I put my enclosure right up here where my missing is because I've got a water supply here right on the other this. On the other side of this wall, I've got a switch, so I run just run electrical up through this wall, and that makes it really easy to control these from a switch I've got inside. Uh, and I soundproofed that box a little bit. I'll I'll put a link for uh, a video I did on soundproofing a little bit. Um, but as you can hear, it's nice and quiet. The sound of the pump is actually quieter than the sound you get from the mist coming out. When you're putting the mist line along your roof line, uh, I prefer not to have it coming straight down. So you can see mine is angled out slightly. And that does a couple things. One is it can be kind of annoying if you're sitting in here and you've got a bunch of mist blowing on you constantly. So this helps, especially if it, it can be windy, it helps keep the mist away from people that might be sitting in here. Um, it also expands out the area of that mist wall a little bit. And the last thing is, because you're not shooting it straight down, you're less likely to get those uh, the water build up on the ground. So that's what a really good high quality system, mist system looks like. Uh, however, this is very expensive. The misting pumps, so this one uh, for a 1,000 PSI was around $1,200, and pumps go up many times more than that. You can spend three, $4,000 on a fancier pump. This is kind of like the entry level one for, for that level of pressure. Now, I know they also sell uh, lower PSI pumps. They sell like a 300 PSI, there's a 150 I think you can buy on Amazon. So I was on city water pressure for a while and the misting was not very good. So I thought, oh, I'll go with the 150 booster pump. So I bought that on Amazon, I think it was like $150 or something like that. And it's not really much of an upgrade. I didn't really notice much of a difference. I would recommend just kind of skipping that. If you don't have the budget to spend, uh, $2,000 on a misting system, uh, I would just go off of your water pressure. Unless your water pressure is really low, 
I had around 70 or 80 PSI and you know that's that's good enough for like an entry level NIST system and it does work but it doesn't work nearly as well with this high pressure. The high pressure is a real game changer. So you know five years ago or so I was just on the city water pressure. Misting was just okay um, but now I ended up having the budget for it. We saved up for it and so now we've got a nice pump in there. It's cranking out this mist and it is so much nicer out here. Um, already in the last couple days we've been spending more time outside over the summer because uh, it just extends your season that you can spend out here because otherwise it's just too hot but with these I mean they can drop the temperature multiple multiple degrees it's it's really nice out here so the two things I would recommend one is if you just have a small budget you know hundred dollars or so just go you know to a home improvement store Amazon or whatever you can get uh, PVC pipe and little nozzles that just screw into those or you can get the thin nylon uh, line and a couple of uh, missing nozzles just for pretty cheap run it off your city pressure and you know for a small area I think that'll do just fine for a lot of people um, but if you've got a bigger area or you really want a good perform a really well performing system uh, save up budget for the more expensive one uh, you'll probably need at least $1,200 for the pump. The nozzles generally aren't too expensive, but the line, depending on what you buy, this is stainless steel line, so it's a little bit more expensive, but it'll last forever. Uh, that can be several hundred dollars, but it really depends on how big of a run you have. Um, mine's pretty small, so it wasn't too expensive for me. Uh, you plumb up your water, get some sort of electrical and a way to turn it on and off, and you know this system is the way to go it's it's great it works awesome if you live somewhere where it's really humid I'm talking like 70 80 percent relative humidity for the drier parts of your year you can go with a smaller nozzle you can go with like an eight thou or a six thou but even then uh, you probably the Misting systems in those areas won't be as common because they're just not that effective when it's humid out. It's the same kind of idea with uh, evaporative coolers or swamp coolers. Where it's humid, they're not going to work that well. So if you live somewhere where it's humid, unfortunately this probably won't be a great option for you. But it really just depends on, on where you live. And do a little bit of research, you know, see what other people are doing. Talk to an expert, um, you know, find a, a good reputable store, call them up, ask them some questions. Um, that's what I did that they helped me sort of get all the pieces that I needed to, to make the system work So I recommend doing that if you're looking at investing the money uh, to build a nice system